Welcome back to 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim's spoiler playthrough. I am Hamburger Chariot and I'm here with my best friend Mirth Mauser. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to be here. It has been a while. Um, I have not edited any of the previous recording session because I have been on break. Um, hey, no rush. There's absolutely no rush does mean there's going to be a hell of a lot of content that drops in a short amount of time once I finally get around to it though. Um, yeah, sorry for the wait, I hope you guys are happy anyway. Not that many of you watch, but we'll be fine. We are almost done with the prologue. It's like the fourth recording session? Fifth? And we're finally- We came very- very close to beating it last time, but and we're finally ran out of time. almost out of the tutorial. It just goes to show we had that much to say about it, especially with the last one. I think that one went to nearly an hour. Yeah, I think it did hit an hour. One second. Yeah, we really went off on um on uh, character themes and themes of the game and. Uh, and sound editing, which again, the sound editing for this game is phenomenal. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, this game was very, very lucky that uh, it got its English dub, like, at least they had everything recorded right before the pandemic hit, because I have heard at is like Atlas West trying to figure out how to record stuff during the middle of it. Again, I love Strikers. The actors are doing a great job, but you can really hear that they're not working with the best equipment. Yeah. It's such a shame. It is such a darn shame. Yeah, and it got delayed for like a year because of the yeah. pandemic. The it's, it sucks all up. around. And just, again, the actors are doing a great job in this game, but years from now, people are going to play the English dub of this game and think like, why does this not sound right? What's wrong with the sound editing? It's just like, that's that's the beginning of the pandemic for you. Such anyway, a shame. Let's hop into it. Yeah, let's go right into it. Point is, this game was lucky and it sounds phenomenal. Number 19, commence movement. Oh my god, it's best boy. It's Miura! It's Keitaro Miura. So I'm fairly sure that this song is Methionine and it's another great one. I will double check, but you are most likely right. Because you are always right about these battle sentinels. tracks. Some are even fighting. Hey, Taro! Holding up all right? Takatoshi-san, so was you! No matter the war, it's an honor to fight at your side. Shinonome-kun, you deployed without permission from the Shikishima facility? It's my sentinel, isn't it? And this Another is Shinonomi's first interaction, mm. actually. Yeah, this is the first time we get to see her. Um, Shinonome is certainly a character. Uh, she's actually a character, uh, again, another toxic character that I really enjoyed the writing of. I wish her arc had a bit more of a satisfying conclusion, but I mean, I still enjoy the character herself. I find her to be a lot more entertaining than Megami. And I think she has a much stronger story route with better writing and presentation. I presentation, absolutely. Um, the main thing is, again, the ending is kind of disappointing, but I would argue less so than Megami's. Yeah, yeah. I, if I'm comparing them, yeah, it's not even a contest that Megami has the most disappointing ending to her arc out of all of them. But yeah, Ryoko is another one that I think is a little bit sad, um, cause her ending is that she just forgets everything, and unlike Sekigahara, who, like, that ties into the themes of his route, and he, like, develops from that, and if anything, most of his story is about him remembering shit, Ryoko has, like, all of her story before she forgets everything, and then just kind of doesn't do anything for the rest of the game until the final battle. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily have minded if, you know, if she really forgot everything and had to start over and it was 
you know, kind of framed as this tragedy of, you know, basically this girl completely losing herself. She will not have her memories, her personality, anything afterwards, and it's just going to be a new girl living in her place. I would have been fully down for this just being a tragic thing you have to watch and it's the result of her consequences, but we don't really get that closure. And on top of At least that, I don't it would have made her a better candidate for the character that everything gets explained to at the start, instead of Iori, who should already know at least a decent amount of what she's ex being explained. Oh, uh, you know, no, that's an excellent point. That is an excellent point. Quite a party here. Did I miss an invitation? Best boy as well. <laughs> the gang's all good, here. That is a good read right there. Mmm. Why are you in that sentinel? As long as it's functional, does it matter? Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't come here for more of Sekigahara's flim flam. I'm going back to the front lines. And we're getting a lot of characterization here, setting up the Hijiyama doesn't like Sekigahara. Sekigahara is just willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. He doesn't care what sentinel he's in. That Hijiyama and Miura have a lot of respect for each other, that they know each other, that they're basically both soldier boys, you know, on, proudly on the front lines fighting side by side. I love the warmth in each other's voices when they see each other. Mm. If any one of us tries to do this alone, we lose any chance we have at victory. Fine. So you call the shots. You're the only one here with command experience. We will split into teams individually prioritizing attack and defense. The assault team will include Sekigahara, Shinonome, Karabe, Hijiyama, Miura, and myself. The rest of you will defend the terminal until Aegis activates. Operation Aegis. We're really doing this, huh? We're short on firepower and time. We'll need every trick, every weapon in our arsenal. Right? Here they're really setting up, you know, the full team. I won't back down. Yeah, they're really setting up the idea of attack and defense. Oh, yeah, yay, control adrift. Yeah, they're pulling together everything you learned from all the tutorial battles and say, all right, now put all this knowledge with all these different kinds of generational sentinels and put it in an actual battle now. Guardians. Um, you place them and they act as a decoy. They're not. Oh, I did forget to mention when we were mentioning uh, Shinonome, she yes. is voiced by Hira Buckland, which most people will know her as 2B from Nier Automata. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I can or... hear that now. Oh, oh, that's a nice parallel. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Actually, yeah, that is a nice parallel. You're right. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that too much. I mean, I knew it was the same actress. I just, I guess I didn't think of it that way. You're right. Or as Jolene from uh, JoJo's Adventures Part 6. I do not watch that show in English, so... <laughs> well, She's not uh, familiar, f is like, for me there. I'm a dub fan for some things and a sub fan for others. It really depends. I don't think so. Except for video games. It's always dub. I cannot play video games with like subtitles. Go. Like, you expect me to read when there's action going on? Thank you. Yeah, if there is a dub, I basically always pick it. Um, and that applies to pretty much all media. I'm a big dub supremacist, but I also need subtitles. So it's interesting having to try and find downloads for subtitles for the script of the English dub. <laughs> Because not a lot Ac of people are willing to make them, and that's really accurate annoying. subtitles, mind you. Because usually, when you get the sub English subs on, um, you know, services that provide the English dub, the English subtitles are for the Japanese version. They're mm. not for the English version, which, although I get, is a little annoying. I wish they had both. Oh well, not everything can be Yakuza like a dragon. Yeah. Which, I think, I think Yakuza Like the Dra Dragon handled it a perfect way. It is two sets of English, su uh, English subtitles. One is for the actual dub, and the other is for the, you know, the sub. So one is a bit more of a direct translation of what the Japanese actors are saying, and the other is, you know, the words that the English actors are saying. And that's perfect. Here we go. 
That satisfies yeah, everyone. Yeah, enemy down. That is pretty good, to be honest. I'm not a Yakuza fan, but that does sound like a very good way to tackle the problem. Yeah, this... Uh, the thing with localizations, I genuinely do not mind that, you know, when you're uh, dubbing something, when you're speaking these words out loud to kind of alter the dialogue in a little bit so it sounds, you know, more natural, it flows better, and, you know, it just sounds like human beings talking. I do not mind dialogue changes in that sense. But I do mind it a little bit when I'm hearing uh, the when I can very clearly tell that is not what the Japanese actor said, and the subtitles are telling me they said that. I'm like, no, that's not what they said. Subs, like, come on. So, yeah. I, there, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to be one of those localizer, uh, those anti-localizer people. I'm really not. I'm just. There's a bit of a difference between listening to a dub and, you know, listening to the Japanese actors and just... You know what you know what they're generally saying, and you know when you're not being fed accurate information. Yeah. There's a bit of a disconnect there. So I really think Yakuza handles it perfectly because a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, localized games... Like, even if you're playing it with the Japanese actors, the script that, you know, is actually in the dialogue boxes is matching what the localization is. So, anyone playing it with the Japanese actors isn't going to get technically um, an accurate script. Again, they're going to get that disconnect. They're like, I can tell that's not what the Japanese actor said. It probably sounds perfectly fine when you're with the English actors, but there's a bit of a disconnect for the Japanese ones. Yeah. But yeah, if more games, especially um, technically games made under the Sega banner, which Atlas is under, is are done like how Yakuza Like a Dragon is done, I think that's perfect. But I get that's also a little bit more complicated. Actually, no. Um, I'm pretty sure when it comes to localization, uh, I'm not an expert on this, but it would make sense, you know, kind of have a basic outline of what the, you know, what the script is directly, and then kind of iron it out so it sounds a little better, but then that's just me making assumptions on localization. I am not an expert. I am not, I have not talked to a translator that, who knows, maybe they don't even have that luxury. Mm. Some of them don't. Some of them just like, I gotta translate all of this within 30 minutes, I don't have time. Pretty much. Number 11, moving out. Now then, I'll Number 22, advancing. Unbelievable. I'm acting like an amateur. I do appreciate that, you know, the, um... The, that they actually have subtitles for the battle dialogue here, because a lot of JRPGs just don't. Which is another reason I don't like playing them in Japanese, because I just hear a lot of dialogue that just is not translated if you are playing with the Japanese audio. Yeah. You're just never going to know what they're saying, and that personally bothers me. Yeah, Tails is a pretty big problem with that, unfortunately. It doesn't like to do subtitles in battle dialogue. Persona never does that for any of the games. Yeah. I mean, it'll translate what the navigator's saying as battle information, but you know, when it comes to, you know, the character quotes in battle, those are never now. translated. Yeah. I mean, I never played those in Japanese anyway, but still. Why would you play a Persona game in Japanese, to be honest? I don't know. Like, games in general, why? But, like, especially a Persona title. On the one hand, I can see the argument being made that it is a very Japanese culture-focused game, you want to hear it in its original language and get that, you know, original experience. I can understand that. My counter-argument to that is that these games are very personalized, um, it's like in their dialogue and character writing, and there's just a lot of nuances you are only going to get if you're hearing your native tongue back to you. Mm. So yeah, why would I play Persona in any other language but English? That's that's the one where I can hear all the nuances. Terminal closure in. complete. Surrounding two kilometer area now fully secure. Ending technical analysis. 
This is nothing against Japanese acting at all. It's there's phenomenal Japanese acting everywhere. I'm just saying I'm an English spe speaker. I'm going to catch a lot of, you know, the character nuances in my own language a little better than I am in another language. Mm. There's a lot of storytelling in how a character just reads a line. So here we are introduced to a game oh. mechanic more games should do. You actually get to pick the battle difficulty after you play some of the game. Oh, the good... I don't think I've ever seen that before, actually, now that you've pointed it out. Um, not enough games do it, but it's a really good feature so that you get a feel for how difficult the combat is. Um, this game is generally not very difficult. Even on normal, you will probably S-rank most battles on your first attempt without trying very hard. As I did. Casual... I, I have not tried casual. I do not like playing games on casual. Intense. I have not played through this game, like, from the start, on Intense. I've only gone back to these levels, significantly overleveled, and done them then. I hear that Intense is not exactly Intense, but, like, it's the one where you will have to actually try a little bit. Ooh. So, I am going to be picking Intense for this playthrough, because I'd like to test it and see what it's like. Oh, that'll be fun. Again, I don't necessarily seek out difficulty, but if you're really enjoying a, a game's combat, and you know the ins and outs to, to it, it's nice to get pushed back a little. Mm. So here we've unlocked the mode selection, which means we can finally go to analysis at any time. Yay! Uh, we can actually play the game as intended. Speaking of, let's quickly go. Hey, Sekigahara is a boy from another dimension who suffers from memory loss. When he wakes up, he finds the corpse of Chihiro Morimura beside him, but there's no recollection of knowing her. To make matters worse, he is being chased relentlessly by men in black. He finds a message from his past self telling him to escape this world. Um, mystery points. Let's unseal Kyushiba. Shiba, of course. We need to do Shiba first. Kyushiba is Jiro Karabe's childhood friend, who's also into sci-fi and special effects films. He's the life of the party, easy to get along with, and is always making jokes. He seems to have a mysterious power. What could it be? Key. After Asa Higahara lost his memories, he finds this in his pocket. It's a key for some sort of vehicle, and it has an emblem on the handle. So like any car, uh, car key. So from memory, Sekigahara is right near the fucking bottom. Uh, yeah, awakening. he gets his memories very late, story-wise. Which as... again, threw me for a loop! Mm. As the rain hammers down, a Sekigahara wakes up in an alley. Yup. And then we get these two scenes. And they're, like, really not far from the start of the final battle. If the final battle starts on 287, his prologue is 264. Like, most of his story is going to fill up this gap. There is really not a lot left before the final battle when it comes to his yeah, story. Yeah, I think, I think the only thing between, you know, his story and the final battle is just, you know, everyone's kind of ending, you know, them summoning their sentinels and whatnot. Also, if we look at Eiseki Gahara, we get the Kiriko Doji scene, Iori's. We get that time he shows up in uh, Natsuno's route, and all the way at the bottom do we finally get him. So a lot has happened before he loses his memories. So now we can swap to all of the areas. A new area has been unlocked. First area, Ashitaba City. So I always appreciate when a game makes it very easy to swap difficulty. Mm. So in this game, you see the areas are groups of ten waves, and you typically unlock five at a time for story progression. Mm. Um, protagonist selection unlocked. 
Okay, so we have seven people to choose from. One of them is locked, so as we of can course see... it's Hijiyama that's locked. Hijiyama is locked. We cannot do him until we see an event from Nenji Ogata, who Which we, we haven't have. even unlocked yet. And then Shuamiguchi is unlocked by clearing wave two of the first area of the destruction battles. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to clear the first two waves. And then we're going to be ignoring destruction for as long as we are allowed to. So yeah. that we can do as much story as possible. So that we can queue up all of those meta chips to spend on destruction at once. Because oh, oh I boy, pretty we're much... going to want them. Yeah, that's how I pretty much played. Less for the, uh, I guess you could say, meta game meta reasons, and more so I was enjoying the story so much I didn't want to go back to the battles yet. It's not that I dislike the combat or anything, but come on, mm. everyone knows why we're wh why you play the game. Combat's enjoyable in its own right, but remembrance is where it's at. Definitely. So. With that, we're going to call it for this video. Uh, do we have any final thoughts before we start getting into it? I'm just very excited to start Juros, honestly. I have, a, I have a lot to say, but we'll get to that after we get through the first two waves. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to call it for me as well. This is Hamburg Chariot and Murph Mouser signing out. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. See you then!